think over 200 extra bookings, but uh, they're working on that. They're gonna, if they haven't, they're going to fix it very shortly. Um, but it's uh, what I've heard, they've, uh, they're maximizing all their inoculations. They're moving forward in a very good manner. Excellent, thank you for that information, Fire Chief. Do the clerk. Through you, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. I do have a motion put forth by Councillor Hildebrandt, seconded by Councillor Hahn. Be it resolved that Council receive the COVID-19 update presentation from B. Limburner, Fire Chief and Community Emergency Management Coordinator for information. If there's no further discussion, I will start the vote with Councillor Hildebrandt. Yes. Councillor Kaur. Yes. Councillor Olson. Yes. Councillor Stewart. Yes. Councillor Wink. Yes. Councillor Hahn. Yes. Mayor Junkin. Yes. Thank you, and that motion carries. Thank you. And then the uh, next report is from the uh, our award-winning CAO, uh, Mr. Cribs. Uh, you have the floor. Good evening, Council. Uh, my presentation this evening was going to be about uh, use of the MCC uh, as a vaccine and inoculation site, but I feel like that's now been effectively canvassed. So, uh, unless there are questions, I'll. Uh, just take a pass this evening. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. CAO. Any questions uh, that perhaps didn't come out in the Chief's uh, conversation with Councilor Hildebrand? Anyone have any other further questions? Not seen any, Madam Clerk? Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, thank you very much for good measure. We have a motion put forth by Councilor Stewart, seconded by Councilor Wink. Be it resolved that Council receive the COVID-19 update presentation from D. Cribs, Chief Administrative Officer, for information. And unless there's any discussion, we would start the vote with Councilor Core. Yes. Councilor Olson. Yes. Councilor Stewart. Yes. Councilor Wink. Yes. Councilor Hahn. Yes. Councilor Hildebrandt. Yes. And Mayor Junkin. Yes. And that motion carries. Mr. Mayor, that does bring us to our registered uh, delegation for this evening, and I would just ask Ms. Leach to bring in um, our delegates. Just, there we are. And we'll just be getting ready to share our screen. There is a few um, individuals that will be added to the meeting. And the uh, lead individual for this delegation is Mr. John Langendown, and he is representing the Pelham Greenhouse Growers Group, and his presentation is with regards to hoop houses. Okay. And we have shared our screen, and sir, um, just so you are aware, your delegation is timed for 10 minutes. At eight minutes, you will hear a ding on a bell, and at 10 minutes, the timer will go off. You may begin whenever you are ready. Mr. Langendown, you have the floor. Okay, all right. Can you see me and hear me? Uh, would you be nice if you could speak up louder, sir? Okay, how's that? A little more. A little more? That was, that was good right there. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of council. On behalf of the Pelham Greenhouse Growers Group, I'd like to say thank you for providing us with this opportunity to make this presentation. First slide there you see in front of you is uh, simple hoop house that we use for dormant plants. The, um, the um, picture you see below is a uh, complicated greenhouse growing marijuana and it's a highly advanced uh, greenhouse with lighting, heating, shading, climate controlled with state-of-the-art computer systems. Next slide. Pelham Greenhouse Growers Group, the PGG we call it, um, is made up of 11 nursery and greenhouse operations here in Pelham. Our mandate is to facilitate communication between growers in the town of Pelham. Co-chairs are myself from Bullerbrook Nurseries and Louis Dam from Fall Dimensions. Our consultant is Hugh Fraser from OTB Farm Solutions here in St. Catharines. The picture below it you see is, a, is our container area. The plastic and hoop houses have been removed in spring so that shrubs and perennials can grow all summer and into the fall. Notice the hoop houses, and you see also the plants grown in between the hoop houses. The PGG is a huge economic and job driver. We have 1.6 million square feet of greenhouse, of permanent greenhouse space. We have 1.1 million square feet of temporary hoop houses. 
with a farm gate value of 42.5 million annual sales. We have 135 full-time employees, 64 who live and pay taxes here in Pelham. We are family farm operations where we work, um, we're self-employed as well as our children, and even our grandchildren work in our nurseries and greenhouses. We also have 205 plus part-time offshore workers with a payroll of $2.5 million. The picture below you see on the plant space in a hoop house ready to be covered with opaque plastic in late fall. So we're waiting for a cold period. Uh, so these plants are very, very dormant before we put the poly on. So this, is about, this will be about end of October, early November. Our ask is no other municipality in Ontario except for Pelham asks for building permits for hoop houses. We ask council for the same treatment as our competitors. Building permits cost a lot of money, slow down expansion, and trigger property taxes. Picture below it, you see our boxwood space both outside and inside the hoop houses so we can, so can grow all summer long. These hoop houses serve no purpose rest of the year. Once the poly is off in early, in early spring or even late winter, like this year, for example, uh, we're ready to pull the poly off because it's so warm. It could not go back on again until late fall, and that's when the hoops are needed again. Hoop houses have unsuspectingly been caught in local cannabis web. In spring of 2019, greenhouses became no longer exempt from site plant control like all other agricultural uses, likely because of cannabis. In the fall of 2019, an online town report links greenhouses and hoop houses. Existing official plant policies require a zoning bylaw amendment for greenhouses and hoop houses. Lot coverage of the greenhouse or hoop house required that any greenhouse or hoop house would be subject to site plan control. Hoop houses simply aren't greenhouses and should not be linked in any documents. Here are the reasons that hoop houses are not greenhouses. Greenhouses are permanent, hoop houses are temporary. Greenhouses have a clear cladding that encourages plant growth. Hoop houses have an opaque or white cladding that discourages growth. Greenhouses are used year round. Hoop houses are used only over the winter. Greenhouses are worked in daily. Hoop houses are worked in sporadically. Greenhouses can grow marijuana. Hoop houses can't grow weed. Greenhouses have many services. Hoop houses that simply have very little or none. Greenhouses have elaborate ventilation. Hoop houses just have open doors for ventilation. The first picture you see below there is boxwoods. Um, uh, discouraged or discouraged from growing in hoop house. You see the snow pushing it on the sides. That was taken last month. And so the plants are very dormant and, um, and the insulation, the snow on the, on the outside provides some insulation, which we like to see. Picture below that is a uh, greenhouse, same as, same as the canvas greenhouse. They're, they're highly sophisticated. They have heating, venting, shading, lights, conveyor systems for shape moving plants, as well as high tech equipment. These greenhouses produce plants year-round, not just in not just in summer, but all through the winter months because of the type of technology that you see there. Here are more reasons that hoop houses are not greenhouses. Greenhouses are built by skilled contractors. Hoop houses are built by growers themselves. Greenhouses have permanent floors. Hoop houses are on sand, or on soil, or stone. Greenhouses have foundations set in concrete. Hoop houses just have pipes pounded in the ground. Hoop houses have piers below frost. Hoop houses are just pipes at two, feet, uh, two feet deep in the ground. Greenhouses are heated. Hoop houses are almost as cold as the outside temperature. Greenhouses are engineered. Hoop houses are not engineered. Greenhouses use structural steel. Hoop houses use non-structural steel. In the picture below, you see how we just pound in the stakes with a sledgehammer, very simple. Uh, technology, nothing special about it. There's a string line there to guide us, and that's about it. Picture below that is a typical sophisticated greenhouse built by skilled, skilled contractors. There are more reasons hoop houses are not greenhouses. Greenhouses are often 1 million square feet in size. Hoop houses are rarely 10,000 square feet in size. Greenhouses can get up to 32 feet high under the gutter. Hoop houses are rarely get up to 8 feet in height. Greenhouses are gutter connected. Hoop houses are not connected. 
Um, there was a little lot, uh, uh, item there about RS, about retail sales tax, however, that's old uh, information. Uh, both pay uh, HST and get to claim it back as input tax credit. Greenhouses are property tax everywhere, roof houses only in Pelham. Greenhouses everywhere need building permits, roof houses only in Pelham. Greenhouses cost at least $50 a square foot, hoop houses are about $1.25 a square foot. You see the first picture below there, the architect of greenhouses, because of the high technology, the clear cladding, and the, and the heating that's available to them, they can be connected. Hoop houses are not connected. So the area you see between houses allows for snow load to slide off. Next page, thank you for listening. Some believe hoop houses are slippery slope to growing cannabis inside, but cannabis needs good growing conditions like in a greenhouse. Not the conditions you see in a hoop house, that is, temporary, covered with opaque plastic that plants won't grow in, un they are unheated, ventilated manually. Hoop houses should not require building permits, just like they are not in every other municipality. The picture below you see there is a hoop house being covered. And this is done in early November. Uh, now it's cold out and we apply the poly just before the snow flies. In closing, I'd like to add that we are a green industry, growing plants and flowers that enhance the beauty of our environment and encourage pollinators, such as birds, bees, and butterflies, to thrive. It promotes healthy food production. I've been using hoop houses here at Rollerbrook for 42 years. They are, an essential, they are an essential, critical component of our nursery production. All of a sudden, they are a problem. This was unexpected and adds more stress and overhead to our businesses during a difficult time period. We as growers were not notified or included in any discussions with regard to this change. We grow fruit trees, fruit bushes, herbs, and veggies so that homeowners can grow their own food. We grow large numbers of shade trees and native plants to do our part to be good stewards of the earth and to help minimize the effects of climate change. Our business has also been hit hard with the COVID pandemic. Our company alone will spend over half a million dollars between this year and last year to ensure that all our staff are kept COVID free and COVID, sorry, COVID safe. Some of these costs we can recoup, a lot of it we cannot recoup. We need less challenges, not more, to keep our businesses viable going forward during an extremely critical time. We also have a letter uh, included from um, both GGS structures and our association. That's good material. I will further clarify any questions on who house structures and our association experiences and municipalities. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the, for the presentation, Mr. Langendurn. Much appreciated. I will now uh, turn to counselors. Anyone have any questions to ask John on his, uh, on his presentation? Uh, questions or comments? Uh, I see Councillor Stewart. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation, John. Um, just a couple questions. Um, you're talking about hoop houses versus greenhouses. There's obvious differences, but are there different types of hoop houses? Uh, uh, yes, there is. Um, and so uh, the hoop houses you see uh, in my presentation are very simple, uh, straightforward, uh, low technology, and uh, which is also our um, what are called freestanding greenhouses. So a freestanding greenhouse is similar, kind of in between the hybrid of a hoop house and a hybrid of a dark nut range. They are about 30 by 30 feet in width, uh, could be 300 feet in length. Um, they are of structural steel. Um, they are heated, they are ventilated, they are also uh, computer run, um, they also have venting in them, um, automatic automation, automatic irrigation, those sorts of things. So uh, sometimes there's confusion between what's a hoop house and a freestanding greenhouse, and, and, and so uh, that is confusing for, yeah, for, uh, for um, inspectors and for building farmers to understand. Okay, thank you. I have uh, one more question. Is there ever an exception where there could be a requirement for a building permit for a greenhouse? Uh, are, you, are you expecting to be like all exempt? 
Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, also back to the first question. Also with those freestanding greenhouses, we grow plants in there year round. So uh, there are people employed working in there all winter long as well. So there's a difference there too. In that at Hoop House, there are no employees in there all winter long. You saw the picture of the uh, Hoop House that's um, um, covered in snow. Um, during that time period, there was no employees in there whatsoever waiting for the snow to, to melt away. Uh, whereas with freestanding, they're heated. So there are employees working there in, in there all winter long. With regards to, um, um, oh, uh, with regards to building permits for, view, for roof housing. So uh, prior, as we put this presentation together, um, our association, which now is uh, 20, 20 high members strong, put out a survey to the membership. Um, and the, the growers responded to the survey. And of the growers, we had a 43% return on, on the survey, which is pretty good. Um, all those growers, not one of them, was, ever, was asked to have to get a building permit for hoop houses. Not one of them. Um, however, there are, are also um, independent garden centers that members in that group, and so they are. And they, when they built hoop houses, they were in a commercial retail environment, and they were asked to take a building permit. Uh, so, uh, GTS structure, for example, was one of them. That we, that we talked to, and they had an instance with Walmart where they were asked to provide a engineered um, drawing for a hoop house, and they said, we can't do that. Um, we can engineer the anchor posts, because they were set in concrete and asphalt, but we can't engineer the hoops. It's simply just not possible because of the type of structure. So um, that's the case where um, uh, where a building permit was uh, was requested, but they only were able to do the anchor posts. Um. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor, for the questions. Any other questions from Mr. Langendoon at this time? And I see uh, Councillor uh, Olson. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, how long do you, uh, the covers usually stay on the, the hoop houses? So, uh, so we applied in November, early November, um, and it's kind of a, a bit of a waiting game, watching the weather. Um, two things, the plants have to be very, very dormant. So the flowering shrubs, the leaves gotta be off, the, the buds gotta be dormant. And um, so there's, they've already had a few nights of, few nights of heavy light frost. Because uh, you don't want any growth in, the, in a hoop house. There can't be any growth. Any growth in a hoop house would detrimental to the quality of the plant. You would jeopardize your quality. So it's on for about uh, for about four, 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 four and a half months. So say mid November, December, January, February, mid March. All depends upon the weather. Um, and so right now, uh, a few weeks ago, we had uh, like a very warm, and we cut holes. Every other hoop had a three foot hole on the east side, to cool the plant down. You just do not want growth in these, in these, on these hoop houses. So the plants from here will go to garden centers. And they'll be outside, outside environment. The plants have got to stay dormant. <clears throat> Councilor, thank you through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, and, and I neglected to thank you for the presentation, uh, which uh, which persuaded me that uh, these are these are indeed temporary structures, and they're not uh, not intended to to uh, by height and and. Uh, coloration and everything they're 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 temporary structure truly temporary structures um i was wondering that it, it, one of the report one of the items on your thing says it's uh made to uh, made to protect perennial plants is it only perennials that uh you have in there i uh, know we other do than, uh sorry um other than your boxwoods and your and discouraging the growth of them yeah, so we grow we grow um, a lot of varieties. We grow flowering shrubs, um, like forsythia, dogwood trees, uh, spireas, um, um, plants you may be familiar with, um, and just a host just a host of flowering shrubs as well. We also grow uh, evergreens, spread evergreens, junipers, um, taxes, hicks hues, uh, upright junipers, um, just a lot, a lot of different varieties of plants. Any any kind any kind of garden plant. That you see in the garden, we would uh, grow in, the, in this hoop house environment, several winter under under poly. 
Okay. Um, uh, Councilor Corr? Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation, John. And I want to thank you. Uh, being in the business, uh, a little bit in the business of selling plants, I know your company was is one of the largest companies in Ontario, supplying a lot of retailers across Canada. And uh, I appreciate that. And, uh, and thank you for all your support within the community. The question I have for you is, the hoop house would never be used by the cannabis growers. There's no, there's no benefit of having that as part of their process. Because of the, the width and height, um, I mean, you could, you could, but it's just not a, um, you're not gonna grow a quality plant. And you can see in the pictures that I applied, um, and you see it too with Radican and with CanTrust, they have invested in high tech greenhouses with high tech technology in order to grow uh, a quality crop and to grow the volume that's necessary. Uh, I, I mean, sure, um, you could you could be in a hoop house, um, uh, what kind of quality you get from that, I, and for long term, um, I mean, if the poly's on in the summertime, you're gonna burn the crop, it's just, it gets too hot in there. It's just not conducive. So, um, I mean, you can grow, um, you can also grow in sea containers, you can grow it in barns, unused buildings, and chicken barns which uh, you see being used. But um, uh, a hoop house is just, I think it's like a last resort really to try and grow cannabis. Councilor? And, and one more question, I don't know if you can answer this. What is your opinion that since Mexico legalized the cannabis business? Well, in Mexico, you won't need a greenhouse or a hoop house. You can grow them outside, probably pretty much year round. So would you think the cost of uh, growing marijuana in Mexico probably in half or uh, 75 percent? Well, we also um, we also uh, uh, work with plants that are in the southern U.S. and we also compete with growers from southern U.S. who also grow junipers, and they can grow uh, those plants outside year-round. So uh, because of our dollar, we are protected so much. But yeah, they've got a huge advantage over us growers here up north. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I see Councilor Hildebrand. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you again, John, for your presentation. I just want to ensure that I understood this properly. In 2019, this bylaw was adopted. Were you not consulted during that time with regards to hoop houses? Or how did this, how did this occur in your view? Uh, we, were, we were not consulted. Um, nobody in, uh, in our uh, greenhouse group was consulted, we're not aware of it. Um, I only found out by being on the Cannabis Control Committee. It's when I, uh, when I came up in our meetings there that I was made aware that uh, that, can that greenhouse was moved for agricultural exemption. And so when I looked into it, um, then it showed up also on the official plan. Um, we did go in discussions um, with, with town staff to work on a resolution, um, but Basically, the, the bylaw really ties their hands up. I mean, they really can't only go on and offer. And, and they did give us some flexibility, but they could not remove or exempt the uh, group house from the bylaw because it's, 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 beyond, it's beyond their mandate from what we were told. Um, but they were very flexible. We had a lot of good, good meetings, but in the end, um, uh, I did apply for uh, more group houses last, last year. And um, I was told I had to apply for building permits as well as go for site plan control. So at that point, I, I pulled my request. Uh, I've not built anything since. Just, I've only, I've only built uh, since that time freestanding greenhouses. Thank you, John. Appreciate your comments. Okay, uh, Councilor Hahn. The Mayor, uh, thank you very much, John. Thank you for taking the time to bring all of this to our attention. Um, so what I would like to ask, I guess, is uh, for a report from staff to come back to council um, to exempt uh, hoop houses that are winterizing plants and for the purposes of not growing plants to be exempt from um, the building permit. Okay, thank you, Councillor. I thought yeah, I'll, I'll leave the go to the CAO or uh, uh, the planner. I will go to the CAO, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cribs. Good evening again, Council. Thank you for the delegation, Mr. Langendoon. Uh, 
I would submit to you that it, uh, a staff report is the appropriate mechanism and outcome. Uh, I would, however, submit to you that you uh, word it in a more neutral fashion. I would not want council to think that uh, there were not a number of errors in the presentation given to you tonight. Firstly, I can inform you that uh, we were guests of Mr. Langendoon specifically when we went out for a consultation with his group in 2019. Barbara Weens and I attended that, as did his worship, as did Councillor Chofi. Um, we have entered into significant, there were significant consultations, and that formed part of the report that came to you in 2019, which led to your decision to include hoop houses because they are, in fact, used by the cannabis industry. And this was the compromise solution uh, upon which we proceeded, and ultimately you made your decision because there wasn't and is and remains no way to separate the two. So we did that work, it resulted in this work product and you considered this. Furthermore, I most certainly wouldn't want council to end the evening thinking that somehow of the 444 municipalities in the province of Ontario, the only one that applies fees or the building code to hoop houses happens to be the town of Pelham. That would of course be remarkably incorrect. We surveyed a number of area municipalities and the only one we can confirm to you that does not apply the code and, and thereby an application fee is immediately to our West and West Lincoln. I can, for instance, inform you that Fort Erie requires permits their fee is 33 cents per square foot. The town of Lincoln applies if the hoop house is a permanent building, in which case it's $1.40 per square meter for the first 929 square meters and 11 cents a square meter thereafter. St. Catharines requires a permit if there's heat and if the sides are roof or roof are in place for six months or longer. Uh, Niagara the Lake requires permits if there will be workers inside the buildings. City of Hamilton simply requires a permit and Leamington requires a permit. So that was our initial small survey. Uh, we are certainly in the majority of rural municipalities in interpreting the building code, which is provincial legislation, that it applies to hoop houses. That is not a town of Pelham invention. I do, however, think that you all parties would benefit from a staff report that can provide some further analysis and perhaps some further options. I do, though, want to emphasize that you did hear a number of these options. These were the subject of the discussions, and that's how we got to this place we are today. But for absolute clarity, Pelham is not the only municipality of the 444 in Ontario that views hoop houses buildings as defined by the building code. Okay. Thank you for that clarity, Mr. CEO. Uh, it is interesting, however, as you notice, uh, that there, the other municipalities, some of the municipalities, especially in the region, uh, do seem to be uh, uh, with the no heat clause uh, six months. Uh, they do yep. uh, seem to cut their greenhouses a little slack, uh, sir. Well, absolutely, and we'd like to include those details and reports so for you to have choice. We just want to make it abundantly clear we're not the only one in the province. Okay. And that you have considered this item during this term of council. Thank you, uh, sir. I see uh, Mr. Langendoon uh, has his hand up. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to reply to the uh, comments from Mr. Cribbs. Um, our association is uh, 2,800 members strong, and we did do a a complete survey of the membership um, of the nursery growers who are members of the association. We had a 43% return uh, of the survey and not one of those growers is required to apply for a hoof house permit for nursery use. That is, includes Langdon Nurseries in Argonne Lake, uh, also more nurseries in the past, because I checked with Craig Larmer, it also applies to J.C. Barker Nurseries in St. Catharines. They've never been asked to um, and a uh, particular permit, building permit. They have been in consultation with their building department. It also applies to Maple Leaf Nurseries in Lincoln. Um, same thing, they built hoop houses last year. They're not required to take a building permit. Also applies to Blue Sky Nurseries, which is in Beansville. Um, same thing there, they built hoop houses. They're not required to take a building permit. 
Some of the biggest growers in our industry are in the Golden Horseshoe. Also includes a huge uh, operation in Flamborough, uh, which is part of Hamilton Wentworth, um, called Con Nurseries. The biggest one is called Con and NVK. And he advised me on Friday that if he was to put all his hoop houses end to end, he'd have 10 kilometers of hoop houses. And he has never been asked to get a building permit. Yes, he has been visited by the building department. When he explained what, what they were doing, that was fine, they were exempt. Um, and this is across the board. Every time um, there was hoop houses being erected, or, or each time when it was a uh, visited by the building department, they explained what they were doing, and they were exempt. So um, when I fly, when I asked for to build um, hoop houses last fall, I was told I'd have to submit a building permit, which would include site plan, uh, site plan uh, illustrations. And when you apply for a building permit, that triggers property tax. And so if I pay property tax on hoop houses, I'm at an unfair advantage with my competitors. And, and we compete, and we compete aggressively. So every, every dollar I can save um, as to my bottom line. Uh, so, um, and that's my request tonight, that I be put on the same, and all, all of us growers uh, here in Pelham, be put on the same playing field as our competitors. That's what I'm all I'm asking for. And we are asking for uh, the Pelham Greenhouse Growers Group. Uh, okay, Mr. Langendurin, thank you for that. I guess we can go back and forth all night. Uh, that was a great motion put forward by uh, uh, Councilor Hahn. Um, any, let's go, uh, any discussion on uh, this, and I, I believe the, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, clerk has the motion. So let's hear that and then uh, see if we want to discuss any discussions on the motion. Madam Clerk. Through you, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. I do have a motion that would be put forward by Councillor Hildebrandt, seconded by Councillor Hahn. Be it resolved that Council receive the delegation by the Pelham Greenhouse Growers Group regarding hoop houses for information and that the material be referred to town planning staff for review and report. Mr. Mayor. Well, thank you. Uh, councillors, uh, you've heard the motion. Any discussions on, on the motion as presented? Uh, my one... Uh, request perhaps uh, either the Mr. CAO or uh, the Director of Planning um, considering that this is a, an industry that's going to be uh, directly impacted uh, by this uh, uh, staff report or the recommendations um, would it be suitable uh, that they were consulted in this report or would they be consulted uh, I, I guess the question I'm asking, uh, would they be consulted during the uh, making up of this report? Uh, Mr. CAO? Well, it would be consistent. We did, in fact, consult when the current bylaw was passed. So it would, of course, be consistent when we uh, review the next report. I think uh, it'd also be appropriate to make sure that they have an opportunity to at least make su submissions of their own on the same evening so they can uh, submit some written materials for your consideration if uh, there are disagreements on specific items in the report. Because uh, really, it's, it's a conjunctive communal effort. Understanding that the real tension here is not a philosophical hostility by yourselves or by the administration towards uh, an industry that has been the bedrock of the community for uh, decades. Uh, it's really came down to a challenge to capture specific behavior from a new entry into the uh, overall agricultural world and to make sure that all of those challenges were captured uh, in one bylaw. So you, I just want to reiterate that this was the compromise uh, uh, position. That being said, there are other all, all, uh, variants taken by a number of our neighbors, save and except West Lincoln, um, so there are more things one can consider or, or, or possible variations thereof. Uh, certainly, I, I think it's entirely appropriate that we consult and we sh will make sure there's at least an opportunity for submissions, but that's not the same as opportunity to specifically draft the report that's going to have to reflect the thought process of your staff. Um, 
Okay, uh, thank you for that, uh, Mr. CEO. And I must say that uh, uh, between talking to Mr. Uh, Langendoorn and, and uh, town staff, at, at no time uh, did I ever sense that uh, uh, town staff uh, purposely or otherwise uh, uh, put forward something that would danger a, uh, a uh, or, or cause undue harm to uh, such a, an important injury. I, I never did get that impression at all. I think either uh, uh, council possibly may have uh, uh, let one slip by us and, uh, and and not quite looked at it as carefully as we could have, or uh, or, or, or whatever. It just it's one of these problems that perhaps. Uh, uh, I, I think needs to have a second look at, and, and I'm glad that the uh, I'm, I'm glad with the motion coming, and I'm glad that uh, to see uh, staff is willing to take another look and uh, see what our neighbors are doing. Uh, Councilor Hahn, I think Mayor, um, yeah, it would seem that the, the differentiation is, and this is perhaps why I got biased because we were very concerned about um, the opportunity for growing things other than. Um, plants that you would put in your garden <laughs> so to speak so uh now that we have some clarification and thank you very much john for that um i think that it's uh the differentiation is going to be that it's for winterization that it's for protection that it's not for uh employee use in, you mentioned employees would not be in in uh, uh under, under the, the the poly and uh also that the poly has is opaque and it's not for growing purposes but but winterization purposes uh, so all those stipulations would, would need to be part of what would be in the report that, of course, staff would bring back to us and give us those options. That being said, um, just wondering about the timing on this. I noticed that John had, had mentioned already that he had he had uh, thought about doing this last year when it was when he learned about the uh, the building permit and the fees associated. Uh, so that would mean that he's looking to do uh, <coughs> sooner than later. That being said, how long until we can expect a report back from staff so that we don't delay uh, anything? Because I know that there is a time with regard to covering the plants and that's gonna happen in the fall. So we need to make sure that we tackle this um, in the next uh, month or so, is that possible? Mr. CAO? Maybe two months. I don't think a month is realistic for us. Um... It, I, I, I think, regardless, this will probably it will be hard pressed to get something fully reviewable that won't that, that will assist with this year's growing season. It might assist for the fall, assuming that that's when some of the construction of hoop houses occurs. The point being winterization, we're being told. Uh, assuming that's correct, then um, perhaps we could hold off until late. Like perhaps the uh, deputy clerk might assist us with the dates in late June and early July, or, or at three, least late June. Three, Mr. Mayor. Yes, just give me one moment. I'll let you know. And perhaps this would be a reasonable time to survey Miss Weens, who would have ultimate carriage of the file, um, as to whether she thought earlier late June would be possible. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, we do have a regular Town of Pelham Council meeting on June 7th and then another one on June 21st. Thank you, uh, Deputy Clerk. Let's go to uh, Ms. Weens, uh, Director of Planning. Uh, uh, Ms. Weens, any uh, comment on either one of those dates, perhaps? Uh, uh, do you think that's feasible? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, through you. I would think that the uh, late June meeting date would be um, feasible. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions, comments from any councillors, uh, either presentation or concerning the uh, upcoming staff report? Not seen any. Um, Mr. Langerton, we thank you again, uh, you and your group, for uh, bringing uh, the presentation tonight to us. Uh, have a good evening, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Good night, all. Good night. Uh, Madam Clark. Hey, Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I wanted just to know if Council wanted to formalize the June 21st date um, for 2021 to have the report back as a formal amendment, or if Council is satisfied that um, Ms. Weens and Mr. Cripps have indicated that is doable. I, I think we can leave it in their, or their hands. Madam Clark, uh, Council uh, suited with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. If there's no other further discussion, I would start the vote with Councillor Olson. Yes. Councillor Stewart. Yes. Councillor Wink. 
Yes. Councillor Hahn. Yes. Councillor Hildebrandt. Yes. Councillor Kaur. Yes. Mayor Junkin. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and that passes. That does bring us to the adoption of minutes, and I do have a motion put forth by Councillor Stewart, seconded by Councillor Kaur. Be it resolved that the following minutes be adopted as printed, circulated, and read. One, SC-03-2021, Special Council Minutes, February 24th, 2021, SC-03-B-2021, Special Council Minutes, February 24th, 2021, 3, SC-04-2021, Special Council Minutes, February 25th, 4, C-04-2021, Regular Council Minutes, March 1st, 2021, 5, SC-05-2021, Special Council Minutes, March 1st. Mr. Mayor, if you'd like to call to see if there's any errors or omissions. Yes, any errors or omissions on the minutes uh, just outlined by the Deputy Clerk. Not seeing any. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will begin the vote with Councillor Stewart. Yes. Councillor Wink. Yes. Councillor Hahn. Yes. Councillor Hildebrandt. Yes. Councillor Kaur. Yes. Councillor Olson. Yes. Mayor Junkin. Yes. That motion carries. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, we are now at item seven of the agenda. Um, as Council is aware, Councillors may request to lift an item of the consent agenda if they wish to amend the resolution presented. If Councillors would sim if they simply want to comment, they do not have to lift. I would just look to see if members of Council have any items they wish to lift. Any items Councillors would, would like to lift? Not seeing any. Madam Deputy Clerk. Thank you. I do have the motion then put forth by Councillor Wink, seconded by Councillor Hildebrandt. Be it resolved that Council, um, that the consent agenda as listed on the March 22nd, 2021 Council agenda be received and the recommendations contained herein be approved as applicable. And this vote would begin with Councillor Wink. Yes. Councillor Hahn. Yes. Councillor Hildebrandt. Yes. Councillor Kaur? Yes. Councillor Olson? Yes. Councillor Stewart? Yes. Mayor Junkin? Yes. And that motion carries. I, Madam Clerk, if I could, uh, I would like to go back uh, and discuss, uh, just for the uh, viewing uh, public's thing, uh, uh, attention to 8.5.2. And that is the Notice of Public Information Center on the Municipal Class Environmental Assessment of Merritt Road and uh, Rice Road. Uh, I just got to pull it up here to uh, make sure they have the dates on this. This is actually uh, going to be on the, uh, will be in the paper. Um, and I don't see, do you, do you see the date on that? I'm sorry. Uh, I know that it's probably going to have a lot of uh, interest uh, this public consultation and I'm sorry but I don't see the date Mr. Mayor I'm just trying to pull that paperwork up if you give me a moment ah uh, there it goes uh, 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 so it's an online presentation and it's March 24th 2021 and it's at 6 p.m. And uh, if you need to, um, uh, you'll have to look on this agenda uh, if you need to uh, get the codes for that meeting. Um, uh, they don't give them here. So uh, anybody that wants to uh, take part or listen to this uh, presentation, uh, I, uh, I encourage you to look on, uh, on the town's website on, this, uh, on the agenda and the uh, item number is 8.5.2. Uh, there will also be, uh, uh, should be something in the paper, in the local paper tomorrow, uh, also discussing this meeting. Thank you. Uh, oh, anybody else, any uh, agenda or any consent items they want to discuss? Not seeing any, and I'm sorry, Holly, I had to backtrack like that. 
Certainly, Mr. Baird, not a problem. That does bring us to item 10.2.1. And I do have a motion put forth by Councillor Olson, seconded by Councillor Stewart. Be it resolved that Council receive report 2021-0055, Town of Pelham support for grant application seeking funding for rural internet connectivity enhancements and that Council authorize the Chief Administrative Officer to provide letters of endorsement and support on behalf of the Town of Pelham as it pertains to any future third-party application for funding under the Universal Broadband Fund to improve broadband coverage in Pelham. Just looking for any discussion? Okay. Any discussion on this motion from any councillors? Not seeing any. Uh, Madam Clerk? Thank you. I would start the vote with Councillor Hahn. Yes. Councillor Hildebrandt? Yes. Councillor Kaur? Yes. Councillor Olson? Yes. Councillor Stewart? Yes. Councillor Wink? Yes. Mayor Junkin? Yes. And that carries. Mr. Mayor, that does bring us to our next um, item, which is 10.2.2. .2. And I do have a motion put forth by Councillor Hildebrandt, seconded by Councillor Kaur. Be it resolved that Council receive report 2021-0059 Recreation, and that Council direct staff to maintain ice in both the arena surfaces at the Meridian Community Center for the summer of 2021. Looking to see if there's any discussion? Yes, any discussion on this motion? If you, uh, yes, well, let's go Council Wink. Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, to the uh, Director of Culture and Recreation. What was the reaction of Pelham Lacrosse regarding the ice services and uh, temporarily relocating to Welland? Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, <clears throat> we spoke briefly, or actually, um, Pelham Minor Lacrosse did contact. Uh, staff through um, email, um, I would say in February. And we have since uh, been trying to get in contact with them and to date we haven't received a call back. They were supposed to be calling us and they haven't. We have um, requested, as you can see, we have requested time from the city of Welland to accommodate their needs for the summer and they are more than happy to do that um, and I believe the last time that uh, we did speak to lacrosse they did know that we were going to be requesting time in Welland for them. Councilor Wink? Yeah I just um I understand where we're going with with the summer ice, I, um, but I, I hate like hell to, heck, sorry, excuse me, hate like heck to make a decision about the ice when we haven't had a, a fulsome uh, conversation with one of our, our local minor associations that, um, that will be impacted uh, as a result of this recommendation. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, just to, uh, if I may ask a question to uh, the uh, director. Uh, so, um, Welland is not having any ice at all this summer, so their, their arenas will be empty, uh, correct? Uh, okay. Through you, Mr. Mayor, yes, that is true. Okay, okay, thank you. Just wanted to make sure that the ice is uh, definitely going to be out in Welland. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Any other uh, discussions on this motion? Uh, Councillor Hildebrand. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to the Director of Recreation. Do we have contractual commitments with lacrosse? Because I remember last year, we sort of had the same same issue and we decided to run summer ice. I, I think coming in the future, I think summer ice is one of the things we're always gonna run in both of our arenas because I can see the demand being there. Because right now, as far as I can tell, we've got 13 local rinks that are already shut down, coming to 15 shortly. And it seems to be that's the going thing with most municipalities. That leaves us with great demand for our ice services. So is there a contractual commitment we have to the lacrosse? I know they're a local, local community. Through you, Mr. Mayor, we do have our um, <clears throat> pledge agreement as well as a license uh, licensing agreement. Um, 
these uh, last year and this year is unique. I don't need to tell you that due to COVID. Um, normally we would have many other events on the pad that would offset, um, you know, revenues. So we would start off with the Kinsman Home Show, the um, Pelham Art Festival. We've hosted uh, graduations, um, different con um, competitions, uh, as well as lacrosse. Now, when you have a full, uh, you know, a good rental for a pad, um, it makes sense to offer something like that. Um, whereas this year, we only had limited use through um, lacrosse at um, estimated um, revenues of $5,400. Whereas we have commitments at this point, um, approximately $180,000 worth of ice rentals. So this year in particular, again, due to COVID, um, this is our recommendation. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Hildebrand, before you, uh, if you have another question, I'd like to go to the Mr. CAO. I, well, my answer is a uh, variant on Ms. Van Raven's ways. Uh, one of the things, uh, it's a best practice to let the, sorry, I don't have all the terminology uh, mastered, but uh, your ice, your, the ice pad rest. You, it's not designed to keep ice on it 365 days a year in perpetuity. So we do know we need at some point in time in the future to take the ice off to sort of, again, I, I say let it rest, but I don't think that's the technical term. Um, so so uh, we suspect that this will be the last time we run both rinks all summer long with ice on them. We have every every intention, and of course you have control, but we have every intention next calendar year of going back to the previous uh, setup, the, what was originally conceived. And certainly there are multiple users then, different cultural groups, plus the sporting group. Uh, in this instance, uh, it, it the staff report is premised firstly on the financial disparity. It's 180,000 versus 5,000, but it's more than just money. That those dollars represent, uh, you know, a, a, a hundredfold increase in use. There will be far more human beings using the the facility if it has ice in it. So there'll be far more exercise, far more community enjoyment, um, and, and so it's just a very a very stark and frankly crass utilitarian analysis uh, for this year only, we, we believe, sir, if that offers some comfort. Thank you, Mr. CAO. Uh, Councilor Hildebrand, uh, did you have any other questions or comments? Thank you for okay. your comments. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Stewart. Yes, thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, to the Director of Recreation. Uh, you quoted a dollar figure of $180,000. Is that for the one ice pad or for both? Through you, Mr. Mayor, no, that is for both. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments on the motion? Okay, I, I think the, uh, I have to support this motion. Uh, the, the fact that there is uh, arenas available for lacrosse uh, five or six uh, kilometers away. Um, and then the fact that our ice is in, uh, it obviously isn't gonna pay us to, uh, doesn't make any economic sense whatsoever to uh, take the ice out for whatever that short season is and, uh, and uh, forego uh, all that revenue. And, and the fact that obviously the, uh, it's going to be well used by uh, by the communities uh, surrounding us and uh, uh, the people within ours. So uh, I have no trouble supporting this motion. Any other questions, comments before we uh, uh, call the vote? Not seeing any, Madam Deputy Clerk. Three, Mr. Mayor, thank you. And this vote will begin with Councillor Hildebrandt. Yes. Councillor Kaur. Yes. Councillor Olson. Yes. Councillor Stewart. Yes. Councillor Wink. Yes. Councillor Hahn. Yes. Mayor Junkin. Yes. And that motion carries.
Mr. Mayor, this does bring us to item 10.2.3, and I do have a motion put forth by Councillor Hahn, seconded by Councillor Wink. Be it resolved that Council receive report 2021-00063, recompensation to facility users during COVID-19, and that Council approve the recommended facility rate reduction during COVID-19 red control level compensation to Peller Minor Basketball Association to offset losses of gymnasiums during vaccination center use and unforeseen costs to offset Pelham Minor lacrosse relocation for summer season and that all expenses be covered under the COVID-19 Provincial Funding Relief Fund. Through you, Mr. Mayor, looking for discussion. Uh, thank you. I will, on the motion, is there discussion? And I see Councillor Hildebrand. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to add an amendment to the motion. I'd like to add that Council approve the red level ICE rental rates until April the 14th, 2021, being the date that the regular ICE rental season ends for organizations, and that the effective date of April the 15th, 2021 to August the 15th, 2021, the summer ICE rental rates shall apply to all rentals as per the rate schedule approved by Council in January of 2021, and that the following August 15th, 2021, the January 2021 approved town ICE rental schedule shall come into effect. Okay, thank you. Uh, any comments on this amendment? Councillor Hahn. Well, through the mayor, I'll second that amendment. However, I do have a, a comment to, or a question, I guess, to ask, and that is with regards to the um, offset in the Pelham Minor Lacrosse. So as we were just talking about in, in 10.2.2, um, my only concern there is that um, the Director of Culture and Wellness uh, Recreation uh, had mentioned that she hadn't had the opportunity or there has been a disconnect, I guess, between um, uh, the association and herself and trying to connect. So it just seems a little odd that we're going to offset costs with an organization that we haven't been able to touch base with. <laughs> so we don't know what they want or when they want it. Okay, uh, Director of uh, Recreation, please. So th through you, Mr. Mayor, um, <clears throat> we do know um, the dates and the times and the amount of hours that um, they have requested because they have given us that. What we're requesting is um, the rates for the pad at the Welland Arena are higher than our rates. So in other words, the difference between, we, we don't want them to be uh, any more inconvenience than what they already are. Um, and so the suggestion is that the difference we would take out of our COVID-19 provincial um, financial relief fund. I see. I say, do we have uh, any idea, uh, or I guess, but do you have any idea what that would be? Not, not that it matters, it's gonna be covered by the fund anyway. Right. Okay. Through you, Mr. Mayor, the, the um, total rental, if they were to rent here, would have been $5,400. So we're looking at, I believe if it's $1,000, it would be a lot. Okay, yeah, thank you for that ballpark. It's, it's minimal, but yeah. we want to be able to offset any any other hindrance. Yes, excellent, thank you. Uh, Councilor Hildebrand? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to clarify the reason for my motion. Um, I had a call from the Pella Minor Hockey Association and all they were asking for really in their request was they said our hockey ends at the end of March, and I think they're going to play one Saturday, the first Saturday, in for uh, on the ice pad. So that's that's the end. So basically, he was telling me that's the end of our regular season. We're not asking for anything till we start back up in September. And I guess when we get to September, we'll, we may have to take another look at it. So for, for them, the suggested red rate up till that date was more than satisfactory. That's that's all they were asking for. I see. Thank you for that clarification. Excellent. And uh, uh, so one other uh, question I have for the uh, director. So are our summer rates this year comparable to last year? 
Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor, the, uh, we did not increase our summer rates. Okay. They are the same. Yeah. Thank you for that. Any other comments? So, oh, uh, Council Wink. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, I guess um, us going to full rates middle of April or whatever, um, we don't know if we're going to be out of the, out of the red zone at that point in time. So the users are going to be limited to the number of participants that they can have on the ice. But the amendment is suggesting that we charge them full price for the use of the ice rental and doesn't hardly seem fair. Like once the reds lifted, we're in another zone, we can put more people on the ice and then yeah, we'll, we'll get our full rate. Right. Thank you. I see uh, Councilor Hildebrand uh, has a statement. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Our regular ice rental rates are $207 for prime time. Pelham youth is 148. Non prime time youth is 87. And adult is 114. The summer ice rental rates that we approved in January at our budget. Summer ice rates, April 15th to August 15th, non-prime time were 112. Prime time 148 for youth and 179 for adults. So they were a reduced rate already for the summer ice rental. They, were, they weren't our regular ice rental rates. Councilor Wink, any other? I don't have the, um, the other rates in front of me, so uh, I'll take your word for it, Councilor. Okay, thank you. thank you. Any other questions, comments on the uh, on the amendment we're on right now? Okay. Uh, um, uh, so perhaps, uh, Deputy Clerk, if you could just read the amendment one last time. Most certainly. The amendment is that the the amendment is to add the following: that council approve the red level ice rates until April 14th, 2021, being the date that the regular ICE rental season ends for organizations, and that, effective April 15, 2021 to August 15, 2021, the summer ICE rental rates shall apply to all rentals as per the rate schedule approved by Council in January 2021, and that following August 15, 2021, the January 2021 approved town ICE rental schedules shall come in effect. Okay, thank you. Any other, before we call the vote, any other comments or questions on the amendment? Not seeing any, Madam Clerk? Thank you. So for the amendment, the vote will start with Councillor Kaur. Yes. Councillor Olson. Yes. Councillor Stewart. Yes. Councillor Wink. Yes. Councillor Hahn. Yes. Councillor Hildebrandt. Yes. Mayor Junkin. Yes. And that am amendment carries. Therefore, that brings us to the main motion as amended for discussion. So on the uh, motion itself uh, with the amendment, any uh, questions or comments? Not seeing any. Madam Deputy Clerk. Thank you. We will again start the vote with Councillor Kaur. Yes. Councillor Olson. Yes. Councillor Stewart. Yes. Councillor Wink. Yes. Councillor Hahn. Yes. Councillor Hildebrandt. Yes. Mayor Junkin. Yes. And that motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That does bring us to item 10.2.4. There's a motion put forward by Councillor Stewart count, and seconded by Councillor Olson. And this is in regards to the Park Place South planning report. And the motion reads that committee receive report 2021-52 for information as it pertains to file numbers 2016 19-02-2020 and AM-08-20 relating to Park Place South and that the proposed changes to the draft plan of subdivision and zoning bylaw amendments related to Park Place South are minor in nature and no further public meeting is required, and that committee directs planning staff to prepare the bylaw for approval for the zoning bylaw amendment for council's consideration, and that council approve 
The draft plan of subdivision attached as Appendix A, subject to the conditions in Appendix B. Through you, Mr. Mayor, looking for discussion. And I believe this is Councillor Wink's uh, conflict. Yes. Yes, Mr. Mayor, and I have noted that here. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the rest of Council, uh, on, uh, on the motion, any discussion, comments? Councillor Hahn? Uh, through the Mayor. So in the proposed uh, development for Block 35 to 39, I do have a question. Uh, this would be, I guess, to the Director of uh, Planning. So back to back um, townhouses. So just so I fully understand, I understand the premise of back to back. However, no backyards means that their back wall actually is somebody else's back wall. So the inside units, so it looks like there's blocks of four. So each foundation, they, they pour one foundation, they get eight homes essentially. So um, the inside units essentially would have access and light only from their front door and front window. They would have no side light on either side of their home and no light coming in through the back of their home. So kind of cave-like. Is this my understanding? Have I got this right? Uh, Director of Planning, please. Uh, Mr. Mayor, through you. Uh, for the two interior units, that is correct. The end units, of course, will have um, light windows on the uh, side walls or end walls, but the two interior units, they just have windows at the front. Okay, thank you for that. So um, I guess I'd want to hear from the rest of my counselors, my fellow counselors, because in my opinion, I, I'm actually in almost disbelief that from a, even a safety perspective, that means you have one uh, way to, to, to enter and exit is through your front door. And if there's a fire at your front door, well, you, it's, it's not a good day for you. So um, I, I would be looking to approve this plan with an amendment to the configuration of these to um, look at those blocks again from 35 to 39 on whether it be McCod Road or Drake Road um, and have blocks of fours versus blocks of eights and then there would be at least a three meter side yard on either end of the units. So in other words each unit would instead of being eight it would be four and each unit then would at least have a three meter side yard between the, the foundations of the, the, of the block. But I'd like to hear from the rest of my, my fellow councillors on this too, please. Uh, before we do that, maybe I will go back to the Director of Planning, because that is actually, uh, I, I don't think it's a friendly amendment, because uh, you're not, you're not going to be a, applying that. You're not going to be approving this. Uh, so first of all, Director of Planning, uh, any comments on that amendment? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, through you. Um, so, I mean, that will have an impact on certainly the kind of the total unit count for the developer. Um, this didn't come up in, you know, certainly in the discussions at the public meeting. So um, it's coming out up as a little bit of a surprise. I don't know if the developer, um, you know, is amenable to this type of amendment or not. And um, whether or not that would result in appeal, I can't comment on. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Hahn? Just wanted to respond to that, please, Mayor. And that is, is actually, that was brought up at the, the public meeting because I do recall Councillor Stewart brought up a concern with the back-to-backs because um, I made a note of that, actually. I have that written down. So um, that was a concern that was brought up. But clearly, it was not, uh, you know, it was not articulated in this recent version of the amendment. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, before we discuss the amendment, uh, Deputy Clerk, I would need a seconder. Yes, um, I, I believe that this is a motion to amend, um, indicating that the configurations of Block 35 to 39 be amended to allow for four units instead of eight units with a minimum three meter side yard. Is this correct, Councillor Hahn? Correct. And yes, Mr. Mayor, we would be looking for a seconder. Okay, we need a seconder for this amendment. And I believe Councillor Stewart, are you seconding? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. So to discuss uh, discussion on the amendment then. Uh, any councillor have a uh, comments, questions? And Councillor Stewart. 
Yes, thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I'm confirming uh, what Councillor Hahn said. I did um, bring that to attention at the meeting when it was discussed. And um, yeah, I don't agree with um, a block of eight. Uh, I know Ms. Wayne said, you know, there would be two interior units, but each block, there would be four interior units. Um, you know, it's, it's two on each side. So it, it's a matter of four of the eight in each block. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Stewart, thank you. Um, Councillor Hildebrand. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to the Director of Planning. This is the first, not the first time I've seen it. I, I agree, there was an objection made by Council at the time to this, to this design in this block. And the, the question I still have is, is this the first time in Pelham that this is being proposed? Director of Planning, please. Yes, Mr. Mayor, through you. Yes, this is the first time that we've seen this type of built form in Pelham. Um, it does exist in other communities, but it's the first time in Pelham. Thank you. Councilor Hildebrand? Yeah, I, I agree with my fellow councillors. This type of design is not something that uh, I, I'd be in favor of. No, okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Hahn? Through the mayor, uh, some, uh, another question. So if you were to, to consider what, what is being currently proposed and that's the, the eight, so you've got two interior units, okay? So again, the only light, the only access is in the front door, front window, um, no backyard, no side yard, no nothing. Where do they put things like a barbecue, uh, uh, their garbage cans, their, their you know recycle, their patio chairs? Like it, it seems to me like it would start being that the front yard which is an incredibly small front yard, would then become the place where people are gonna have their garbage cans and be barbecuing in their front yard if they so choose. Is that, is that a reasonable thing to presume? Um, because there are no other, they have no other place to be unless they're gonna have maybe rooftop patios. And if that's the case, it's not mentioned. If, if there's rooftop patios, that might be different. That's not mentioned in this. So maybe you can speak to that, uh, Ms. Weens. My director of planning, please. Yes, Mr. Mayor, through you. Um, I don't have the designs of the units, so I can't speak specifically about rooftop patios and so forth. Um, I would expect that um, there would be some um, private patio space in the front, uh, there could be balcony space, and there could be rooftop uh, patio space, but we have not seen the design of these units. Um, that's not information that I have and I'm able to share at this point in time. Thank you. Any other, uh, okay, Councilor Hahn. Thank you, further to that, I, I just look at the times we're in where, where uh, you know, just even in a pandemic, you've, you've got an awful lot of people who are in downtown cores and cities who would give their eye teeth to have a place to be outdoors um, at the home, uh, a, a larger balcony, a, a rooftop patio and anything, um, and, and they didn't. So, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at possibly building a situation very similar in that, that people are, are in their homes, but if they want to go outside, they really don't have any place outside to be unless, of course, there was a rooftop patio. So based on the fact that we don't know that, um, that's why I'm not in, in favor of the current configuration. Okay, uh, Director of Planning, please. Mr. Mayor, through, uh, through you, I do want to note that there is a park right beside these lands, um, so that will also be uh, amenity space, public amenity space available, um, but it's not on the subject lands, it's uh, town-owned lands that will be developed for a public park right adjacent to this development. Thank you. Councilor Hahn? Thank you. Further to that, actually, and that, and that actually is a good segue to another question I had, Ms. Weens, and that is with regards to playground equipment. Um, how close are we uh, in proximity to where playground equipment will be um, placed? I know there's going to be walkways, we've got the, the, the water, the stormwater management ponds, etc. But where can kids actually play? Is there equipment nearby that's slated to be put in by the developer uh, for them to play on? Director of Planning, please. So Mr. Mayor, through you again, right adjacent to this site is um, land that's owned by the town that's um, to be developed for park land and there would be some type of play 
uh, opportunity available in those lands. Uh, it hasn't been designed yet, and I would have to um, defer to the Director of Recreation, Culture and Wellness in terms of the timing, um, but I believe it's I just have to defer to her. I can't, I don't want to speak out of turn. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, Director of Recreation? Uh, Vicki? Yes, yeah, sorry, I had to unmute <laughs> myself. Okay. <laughs> um, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, I believe uh, it actually is in 2022 that that park yeah. is slated to be developed. Okay, thank you. So uh, next year then. Mm -hmm. So developed with playground equipment? I mean, because we, we look at parks, sometimes we call things parks, and they're really just walkways. I'm talking about a park where there's a playground, because it seems like we may be in a position where we can ask this developer to, to, to pay for, and perhaps this is already in the agenda, I don't know, but they could put in a playground. Is this something that we can look at? Uh, Director so, of Recreation, please. Through you, Mr. Mayor, we do have, uh, this is a very large park compared to your normal neighborhood park size um, and it is intended to have playground equipment in that area there's also another playground that is on off of Lamadi or river estates as well which is right down the road who's paying for that playground uh, just let me double check uh, go ahead um, Mr. Mayor, through you, um, we collect parkland dedication fees from um, at time of building permit. And so the money that we collect for parkland dedication fees goes into the park reserve fund that is used to fund the development of the parks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, while you're uh, searching for that, uh, Mr. Van Maybe thing, we'll go to uh, Council Olson. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I'll be voting against the amendment because uh, I don't think uh, we should be dictating the market terms for this housing. There's a need for it and there's demand for it, and uh, I'm contented with the report. Okay, thank you for that, Councillor. Any other questions or comments? Councillor Stewart? Yes, um, not trying to be disrespectful, but... Um, I disagree with Councillor Olson. I believe it's up to us as council for the town. We need to be the ones guiding the development and what kind of development that um, we, uh, not specifically that we want for the town, but the development that our town needs and our current residents um, would be happy to accept into the town. I don't believe blocks of eight back-to-backs are anything that um, residents and the rest of the town would would uh, be happy with. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I guess one last question I have to uh, to the Director of Planning. Uh, so you say, um, uh, you've indicated, uh, Director, that this uh, type of development uh, is occurring in uh, other parts of the, whether it be the region or the province, um, uh, uh, um, on a steady basis, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like, not uh, is, is this a uh, from a planning perspective? Is um, uh, have you do you see any uh, outrageous um, conditions for this? Um, Mr. Mayor, through you, no, I haven't seen any um, um, issues with it. We've seen this type of development in Grimsby. There's some of it in Lincoln. Um, it is something that is used, uh, or you know, a type of housing form that is very good to the entry level um, home buyer and uh, provides them opportunity to get into the housing market. Um, we've seen some of this in St. Catharines. There's some going on in Niagara Falls as well. Uh, this would be the first in, uh, in Pelham. Yes. Thank you for that, uh, Madam Director. Any other comments, questions before we call the uh, a vote on the amendment? Not seeing any then, uh, Madam Deputy Clerk. Through you, Mr. Mayor, thank you. And again, this is for the amendment. And I'll start the vote with Councillor Hahn. Yes. Councillor Hildebrandt. Yes. 
Councillor Kaur? Yes. Councillor Olson? No. Councillor Stewart? Yes. Mayor Junkin? No. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That is a four to two, and that motion carries. Okay. Therefore, you. we would then be on the main motion as amended, and I'm looking for a discussion. Can you read the main motion again, please? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The main motion, as amended, would read that committee receive report 2021-52 for information as it pertains to file numbers 26T-19-02-2020 and AM-08-20 relating to Park Place South and that the proposed changes to the draft plan of subdivision and zoning bylaw amendment related to Park Place South are minor in nature and no further public meeting is required and that committee directs planning staff to prepare the bylaw for approval and that the zoning bylaw amendment for and for council's consideration and that council approves the draft plan of subdivision attached as appendix A subject to the conditions in appendix B and that the configuration of block 35 to 39 be amended to allow for four units versus eight units with the minimum three meter side yard that would be the main motion as amended, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Any comments, questions on this uh, motion amended? Not seeing any, um, call the vote please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I will again begin with Councillor Hahn. Yeah. I, I, sorry, Councillor Hahn? Yes. Thank you. Councillor Hildebrandt? Yes. Councillor Kaur? Yes. Thank you. Councillor Olson? No. Councillor Stewart? Yes. Mayor Junkin? No. And that is again four to two and that motion carries. And I would just um, indicate that Councillor Wink could come back into the meeting as we're moving on to the next item on our agenda, which would be item 10.2.5. And that's a motion put forth by Councillor Hildebrand, seconded by Councillor Kaur. Be it resolved that Council receive report 2021-0062 as it relates to AM-01-2021 and that Council direct planning staff to prepare the zoning bylaw amendment for 855 Chandler Road for Council's consideration. And I would be looking to Council for their um, discussion. Okay. Any discussion on this motion? I don't see any. Thank you, Madam uh, Deputy Clerk. Thank you. I would begin the vote with Councillor Hildebrandt. Yes. Councillor Kaur. Yes. Councillor Olson. Yes. Councillor Stewart. Yes. Councillor Wink. Yes. Councillor Hahn. Yes. Mayor Junkin. Yes. And that motion carries. Mr. Mayor, that would bring us to item 10.2.6. And the motion is put forward by Councillor Olson, seconded by Councillor Hahn. Be it resolved that Council receive report 2021-0051, Drinking Water Quality Plan, and that Council re-endorse the Quality Management System Operational Plan, and that Council approve the revised Quality Management System Policy S801-01. And Mr. Mayor, we'd be looking for council discussion. Thank you. Any questions or discussion on the motion considering uh, concerning this report? And we go to Councillor Olson. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, a question for uh, the Director of Public Works. Uh, noting that the, uh, the DWQMS that's being presented here is ISO 9001, is there a 2.0 version that's coming to follow this? Director of Public Works? Uh, yes, through you, Mr. Mayor. I don't have that answer handy. Um, I'm not sure if Ryan uh, Cook, our manager of operations, can answer that question at this point in time. Uh, Mr. Cook, are you there? Yes, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. The, 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 this DWQMS version isn't uh, ISO 9000. Um, it's a it's a uh, ministry environment uh, program, uh, yeah. so it's, it's it doesn't really comply with the ISO, uh, but it's its own standard. So it is standard 
we are at standard point two point zero at the moment. Then is that is that what we're saying? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, we are. We're at uh, DWQMS version two. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions, comments on this report? Not seeing any, Madam Deputy Clerk. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. And this vote would begin with Councillor Core. Yes. Councillor Olson. Yes. Councillor Stewart. Yes. Councillor Wink. Yes. Councillor Hahn. Yes. Councillor Hildebrandt. Yes. Mayor Junkin. Yes. And that motion carries. Mr. Mayor, this would bring us to item 10.2.7, and I do have a motion put forth by Councillor Stewart, seconded by Councillor Wink. Be it resolved that Council receive report number 2021-0054 for information and that Council direct staff to implement an aerial spray program based on option two of the Bioforest 2020 Gypsy Moth Monitoring Program report. And I'm just looking for Council for discussion. Thank you. Any questions, comments on this report? Councillor Wink. Yes, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the Director of uh, Public Works. Um, has the Nature Conservancy been approached to uh, spray on the Lathrop property or any discussions with them? Because it's a significant piece of forest that is right against uh, well, it's within our, our urban our urban area. So uh, just want to see if you've had conversation with them and are they willing to pay some of the freight or, or what? Director? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll defer this question again to Ryan Cook, our manager of operations. I know he's running the, uh, the Gypsy Moth program. I'm not sure if uh, there has been any conversations with the conservatory themselves. I know we spray uh, in Marlene Street, Stewart Park, and around that area, but um, Brian, do you have any comments with respect to that? Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, we haven't been in contact with the conservancy, whether they want to, uh, uh, where they're looking to have their uh, area sprayed. Uh, we did do some monitoring plots in and around there, and we're looking at doing some of our own spray in the, in the general area, but uh, uh, not the uh, conservancy. That would be a large private program. They might they might be involved with uh, Trees Unlimited to, to have that sprayed, like the the uh, uh, Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority is. But uh, we haven't we haven't talked to the conservancy. Down floor. Yeah. So wouldn't it be in our best interest that we do have some type of conversation with them so we know what what they're doing to their trees because their trees will affect our trees. Are you, Mr. Mayor? Um, yes, absolutely. We can have those conversations with the conservatory. Um, just unfortunately, there are a number of private lands outside of town lands that uh, are going to be impacted by the infestation that will not be part of the spray program. So um, definitely we can have the conversation with the, with the Nature Conservatory to see if they have any plans with respect to doing a spray program on their own. Yeah, any other questions, Councillor? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions? I do have one myself for the director or for uh, Mr. Cook. Um, the, I, I've seen the map this year uh, of the Ontario section and it has uh, grown uh, uh, very much over last year. Um, could you uh, indicate to us uh, what the egg counts are indicating that this season will look like for Pelham? Uh, yes, uh, so through you, Mr. Mayor. I'll let Ryan expand on this uh, this answer a little bit, but um, in general, the infestation levels um, are, again, severe. Um, there will be defoliation um, that happens with our tree canopy both in the urban and the rural setting. Um, egg masses, uh, number of egg masses are up. Um, the sizes of those new egg masses are smaller than what they've been in the past. So indications are that um, although the infestation levels are high, the, uh, the sizes of the egg masses are indicating that uh, we could possibly be um, on the downturn 
of the infestation. Um, the unfortunate part is is that there is there is severe infestation still, and um, and we'll be developing a spray program that will uh, look to treat the most severe uh, severe areas where we feel that there will be uh, the most severe defoliation. Great, thank you for that. Now, Mr. Cook, anything to uh, add on to that? Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, all indications in speaking with our forestry consultant is that Ontario is staring down uh, one of the worst infestations in the last 30 years. Um, multiple municipalities are, are looking at uh, doing spray programs. Um, in Pelham, I think we've done quite well over the last three years. We've, we're really the only one in the region that we're providing a, a, a public and private spray program. Um, so like the Director of Public Works said, our, our egg masses are starting to, to decline in size, which really shows uh, uh, the health of the population starting to decrease. Uh, there's also indication of a predatory wasp uh, that's starting to attack the, uh, the egg masses. So uh, really good signs uh, as, as far as, as, far as uh, the program and success that we've had. Um, definitely do need to spray, might have to spray in a few different areas as the, the population uh, is kind of moved around a little bit. Um, areas where we sprayed last year fared very well. Uh, areas where we didn't spray are again going to have uh, some severe defoliation. Excellent, and, and so that is exactly where I was headed with this. Um, will we, we do have leeway that uh, we can um, move our spray program around somewhat. Uh, we, we still only spray on town line though, or town land, is that correct? Through you, Mr. Mayor, we do do portions of private property. Uh, we really try to focus on urban areas where it wouldn't be really economically viable for a single uh, urban residential uh, property to have their, their property aerial sprayed if, if that was the case. So. Um, and really trying to get where the eggs and, and the gypsy moths are hatching. Uh, we try to protect around people's homes, but we can't we can't provide complete total spray of, of large wood lots in, in the rural spots. But uh, we're definitely looking at uh, kind of expanding some of the the urban areas out into wood lots. Beside, um, that's kind of where we're we're heading. But uh, Fenwick, South Fenwick, uh, South Bond Hill, the the Welland uh, the Welland Road corridor and maybe a little bit north of Bond Hill as well. So th those are the kind of areas we'll be looking at uh, focusing on this year, I think. Excellent, because actually I was thinking of, uh, I know I've talked to some residents in the South Fenwick area, and I don't think we've sprayed that the last two years. Uh, so if we could, be nice if we could uh, drop some, uh, whatever it is we drop on uh, that area. All right, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Not seeing any, I'll turn to the deputy clerk. Three, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. And this vote would begin with Councillor Olson. Yes. Councillor Stewart. Yes. Councillor Wink. Yes. Councillor Hahn. Yes. Councillor Hildebrandt. Yes. Councillor Kaur. Yes. Mayor Junkin. Yes. And that motion carries. Mr. Mayor, that does bring us to item 10.2.8, and this is a motion put forth by Councillor Hildebrandt, seconded by Councillor Hahn. Be it resolved that Council receive report 2021-0100, Public Works, entitled Update on Pedestrian Safety When Crossing Pelham Street at Churchill for information purposes. Looking to Council for discussion. Thank you, Madam Clerk, uh, Deputy Clerk, and I will turn to Council. Uh, on the, any questions on this report, I see Councilor Hildebrand. Here you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you for the report, Director of Public Works. Uh, it seems like the report keeps coming back with, this, with the same answers for us all the time. And they're just recommendations. I'm concerned about the elevated uh, walkway comment that's still on there. Uh, I don't know whether they're called speed bumps in other terms. But uh, is there any real differences between this report and the last report we got on uh, these crossings? Director of Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it is very similar in nature. Um, the report was meant to give council a complete view of um, what those third party engineering reports came back with as recommendations. So 
um, the easy wins and the quick wins for, for the town of Pelham and engineering department is to implement some of the minor safety improvements that can be done. Um, in general, the, the pedestrian crossings, um, according to both consultants, are not warranted uh, to be, they weren't warranted to be installed in the first place. Um, it was a decision of council, previous council, to install those signals. So basically, um, the recommendation is to provide some minor safety improvements, um, improve the line marking signage, and allow them to function as is. Um, they're currently functioning uh, um, fairly well. Uh, we haven't had a lot of safety issues um, and, and accidents with respect to those signals. Um, so that's the recommendation. Now the consultants also came back with some further uh, recommendations that could that council could consider uh, moving forward with as part of uh, as part of these um, pedestrian safety crossings. Um, those would include um, raised crosswalks to identify the crossing area. Yes, it would be uh, more of a uh, speed bump, um, something like you would see on Hay Street. Um, so that's one that's one example of another safety measure that could be implemented. Um, as well as reduce parking to improve sight lines and visibility uh, for, for traffic uh, identifying pedestrians. Um, and then um, also the report considers some options of going to different types of systems. But in all, um, you know, with respect to the signals that are in place, the capital costs have already been incurred by the town. They're in place, they're operating. Uh, to switch it out to another um, system that that would be a decision for council to make but the recommendation uh, in this report is to basically leave the signals in place and let them operate as is with the minor safety improvements council hilderman yeah one more question to the director of public works with the reconstruction of pelham street which is going to be a major major event is that the time where, where you're going to do more infrastructure at these crosswalks or is that something not contemplated at this time because eventually Merritt Road, I would presume, would get a stoplight. Probably Haste, probably P Pancake might get one. I'm not sure. What are the considerations for that reconsider reconstruction of Pelham Street? Deputy uh, uh, Public Works, please. Sure. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I do have Derek Young with me. He's our manager of engineering, um, and he's uh, kind of an expert on the matter. Uh, with respect to these signals um, and I will make one comment prior to allowing him to speak on the, uh, the, the use of those signals and the implementation of the signals moving forward. Um, we are in the process of getting ready to tender phase two of Pelham Street reconstruction. The limits of that are just south of Pancake and John on Pelham and the design has been uh, completed again using the same pedestrian signal that's there now. So the, the intent for this next phase is not to install a fully signalized intersection at Pancake John uh, and Pelham, um, and that we continue on with respect to using the pedestrian uh, signal, signal as it is. Uh, Derek, if you may want to have a comment with respect to future plans for additional crossings and the need for a signalized intersection at Merritt. Uh, yeah, uh, through you, Mr. Matt. One of the other things we need to consider, as, as you mentioned before, Councillor, is Merritt Road. Um, we're in early discussions with the region with regards to the urbanisation of Merritt, um, but also whether or not they want to look at putting a signalised intersection there. Um, more so because we believe the majority of the traffic is heading north on Pelham will divert down Merritt to head to the 406 once that's fully open all the way through, which will ultimately reduce traffic heading north up through Pelham, Port Robinson, you know, which could in essence remove the signal, well, the crossing at Pancake because there would be a signalised intersection at Merritt and um, Pelham Street, which would also remove the one at Bacon Lane as well. What we need to be careful at and take into consideration is when we do the next phase of design in phase three for Pelham Street is how far we take the, the sidewalks um, on both sides of the road. Do we take them all the way down to Merritt or do we go further and take them down to Spruce Side? So these are the kind of questions we need to start looking at now and try and plan for the future, which is why we're in discussions with the region on, on what they're looking at taking forward as well. Um, 
it's one of those things where the region does not want to commit um, to a fully intersection, uh, signalised intersection at Merritt and Pallum at the moment until they've finished doing their due diligence. So it is something that's in the future to be discussed. Um, but at the moment, we're just planning on leaving the crosswalks, the signalised crosswalks, where they are at the moment. Okay. Are they updating the traffic study? I mean, I think the traffic study that this report is based on is 2018. It's based on 2018 traffic counts. Okay, so they used the traffic counts that we did in 2018. Um, doing a traffic count currently in the, in the COVID situation, you wouldn't get the proper count uh, because obviously traffic is variable and it's also significantly reduced um, because there's not that much traffic out there at the moment. A lot of people have stopped doing traffic counts at the moment due to the fact that the traffic is sporadic um, and it's based on whatever zone you're zoned for lockdown, whether it's a grey zone or red zone, whichever it's in is determined the amount of traffic you're going to get. So we have to go back to the 2018 ones where we felt there was a good cross-section of traffic that we could rely on where it was valuable data. Thank you. If I have a, a question for you, uh, Mr. Young, um, going through the report, it had uh, um, a quite a few uh, alternatives solutions, whatever. I, I, I don't like the, uh, uh, the the one of eliminating parking spots, although I could see it, tell you honest truth, on the west side. But uh, I, the one thing I thought that was relatively inexpensive and uh, and that I have no experience with, but I do dry, uh, plan on driving down to West Lincoln, is the uh, is that PXO uh, system. Uh, for a cost of, uh, it looks like $20,000, and uh, and it seems as if uh, it makes all drivers at that intersection aware uh, of what's going on. Have you had any uh, um, uh, personal uh, experience or have seen this and any comments on how that might work at uh, Churchill and uh, South Pelham? Uh, well, the PXO, um, Mr. Cook and I, we did a... Um, a temporary one mid block between um, Churchill and Pelham, um, where the arches were, Pelham Town Square. Um, and I believe Mr. Cook can speak to almost getting knocked over because a couple of the vehicles just completely ignored them. Um, even although the lights were flashing well, um, they, it didn't operate as effectively as we thought. Ryan, do you want to comment on that? You were the one stood at the road. Mr. Cook? <laughs> Through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I did uh, I did walk out in front of a cement truck though, so <laughs> as a as a whole thing. Uh, PXO is definitely a, a, a good way of, of taking care of, of pedestrian crossings, and they're used more and more throughout the region. They're they're relatively new. Um, I think that might have been some of the issue uh, with the with the study that we did, but I mean it's a valid option. Um, they are used through the region on, on some of the regional roads and other municipalities are using them on local. So uh, definitely get out and take a look, but they're, they're, they're are a handy tool and, and they're, it's a decent design. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, any other questions, comments? Councilor Wink. So through you, Mr. Mayor, and you kind of prefaced uh, my question saying that there's not a great appetite to uh, reduce parking downtown, but the sight lines are, are terrible uh, for people that are crossing. Uh, cars can't see who's standing at, uh, at the crosswalk. Um, with the recommendations that they're putting in, how many parking spots would need to be eliminated to provide this uh, uh, a more safe uh, crossing area. Um, uh, go ahead. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I believe on the west side, um, north of Churchill, we, we, two parking spaces would probably get lost there. So um, right by the church. Right by the church, yeah. I mean, if you have a, a truck parked there or a van, you cannot see past there at all. Um, even as a pedestrian stood there, you, you still struggle to see past the vehicle that's actually parked there. Um, and I recommend 30 meters uh, from the crossing point. Um, so if you measure that out, the parking spaces are normally six meters, seven meters long. So yeah. 
you know, it, it's, it could go further, but I, I think two would be sufficient. So then two, uh, just on the west side, what about, yeah. One, one on the east, one on the other side. Okay, so we would lose three parking spots, which is not ideal, but the safety of pedestrians would increase significantly. Through you, Mr. Mayor, it's not just the pedestrians, it's also the people exiting Churchill in their vehicles would have a better sight line of the vehicles heading south on Pelham Street, as well as being able to see the pedestrians there. It's tough to differentiate between the cars heading south and the people waiting, waiting to cross. So a lot of people are looking for the vehicles and not looking for the pedestrians, so they don't see the lights change, so they, they turn, you know, when they see a gap. Instead of this way, they would notice the pedestrians stood there, as well as seeing the vehicles heading south. So are we making, is staff making a recommendation in this regard or is that going to come back to us as Councillor Hildebrand said, we've seen this a number of times now, so. Through you, Mr. Mayor, we can recommend that we remove, you know, the parking spaces. However, we understand that Council is not in favour of removing parking spaces from downtown. Um, so that's why we put in the report, we recommend for now that we only install the, the signs, the signage, and maybe do some additional line painting, which we can take out of the operating budget for now. Um, and we'll see how that benefits the intersections and the crossings. Um, and if it still doesn't create enough safety, then we can always bring another report back to council and saying it's not working well. We think we need to consider removing the parking spaces. Okay, that's fair. Thank you, Derek. Um, yep, councillor. Yes, yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, getting back to phase two of Pelham Street uh, construction, um, there's going to be some form of raised crosswalk at uh, Port Robinson and Pelham Street. Can that type of crosswalk be put at Pancake and, and Pelham Street? Would that help the intersection at all? Oh, I'll answer that through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so the, the traffic calming measure that's being proposed um, at the intersection of Port Robinson Road and Pelham Street is called the raised tabletop intersection. So in essence, uh, the entire intersection, including the crosswalks, is raised three to four inches across the, across the road section. Um, so in essence, uh, you'd be um, slowing down, driving up onto the platform, across the intersection and then back down uh, the, uh, the the slope into the um, existing road surface. So the entire um, intersection is raised. Um, with the raised crosswalks, um, again, it would be the same principle, but it would be a much narrower um, area that gets raised and would act more along the lines of a speed bump that you would have on H Street. Yeah. So there's there's no plan then. It's not in the plan to have a raised crosswalk at Pancake. Then is that correct? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, that is correct. There is not a plan to have a raised crosswalk at Pancake. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments, uh, Councilor Hahn? Yes, through the mayor. Um, so I'd be remiss not to, to highlight, I talk to constituents all the time that are trying to make a left from Pancake onto Pelham. Um, and at peak times, it's it's very challenging and very frustrating. Um, you know, sometimes they'll actually get out of their car and push the crosswalk uh, button to, to change things. You know, like it's just, it's, it's, it's very, very challenging. Um, so uh, I think that that has to be really taken into consideration. So from a safety perspective, slowing down traffic, absolutely, I, I get all that, but I also understand that people need to be able to make a left-hand turn there, and that's so challenging. I also um, don't know where we're at at this point in time with regards to the possibility of that apartment building that was proposed near that intersection. That would significantly increase traffic as well because it's so close to um, that intersection. So. Uh, I, I think what I understand is that we'll be probably coming back to us at some point in time, but that has to be taken under consideration. 
and also recognizing that we are in COVID and traffic counts will be very different. But after almost two and a half years, I think we can all agree that our population in Pelham has significantly increased and will likely can continue to do so. Um, so knowing we're gonna have more vehicles um, going through that intersection, um, I, I really think we need to consider what we're gonna do about traffic making a left-hand turn there. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, uh, yes, um, Derek. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, to Councillor Hahn, what, that's one of the things we're in discussion with with regards to the region, with the intersection at Merritt. So what we're hoping will happen is a lot of the traffic that is heading north will be stopped if it becomes a signalised intersection, which will make the left turn out of Pancake Lane a lot easier. Um, it'll hopefully also hopefully direct a lot of the traffic towards um, the 406. Um, so that it takes a lot of the traffic away from heading up through Pallet. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Derek. Any other questions, comments? Uh, uh, Director of Public Works. Yes, thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, also identified in the report, and this is a request that came through um, the Pelham Active Transportation uh, Committee, uh, was the fact that the timing for the uh, pedestrian signals was there was too long a delay from the time you actually activated the push button uh, to when the uh, signal uh, turned red and allowed the uh, the um, pedestrians to cross. So currently the timing on those signals is 10 seconds and the region has reviewed it and uh, they are making uh, the timing change to five seconds. So they're reducing that in half. Um, so we're hoping that will um, allow, um, will we'll prevent pedestrians from uh, crossing the street without having the signal activated. Thank you for that. I, I saw that in the report and uh, I was going to mention that. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Not seeing any, Madam Deputy Clerk. Three, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, then we would start the vote with Councillor Stewart. Yes. Councillor Wink. Yes. Councillor Hahn. Yes. Councillor Hildebrandt. Yes. Councillor Kaur. Yes. Councillor Olson. Yes. Mayor Junkin. Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. Through you, Mr. Mayor, that does bring us to um, item number 14. This is motions and notices of motion. And for item 14.1 is the notice of motion from yourself, Mr. Mayor, if you'd like to go ahead and... Um, provide your information. Yep, thank you. So just a very brief outline of what we're uh, looking at. Um, uh, Head Councillor Core second this motion. I would like to have a staff report come to Council uh, telling us, um, uh, advising us on the cost of a snow removal uh, for the Steve Bauer Trail and only the Steve Bauer Trail. It seems to be a uh, uh, just because in this time of COVID and maybe uh, after COVID, it's a major walking trail. Um, and I'd like to see what, uh, what the cost would be to uh, uh, keep the snow off it. Thank you. That's what, that's what the motion will be about. Through you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. That does bring us to item 14.2. And this would be notice of motion from Councillor Stewart. Uh, Councillor Stewart, if you'd like to go ahead. Yes, thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as it says, um, it's um, to delay the regional official plan update. The province has amended so many different things and uh, what this is asking is for the province to delay um, this until there's enough public consultation. This follows with the um, emotion that was passed unanimously in Halton. I'll have the motion for you. I think it's on April the 6th. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. And uh, Deputy Clerk, please. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. That does bring us to item number 19 on our agenda. And I have a motion put forth by Councillor Hildebrandt, seconded by Councillor Stewart. Be it resolved that the following bylaw be ready for second and third time and passed being a bylaw number 4331, bracket 2021, to adopt, ratify, and confirm the proceedings of Council of the Town of Palm at its regular meeting held on the 22nd day of March 2021. Unless there's any discussion, I'll call for the vote with Councillor Wink. Yes. Councillor Hahn. 
Yes. Councillor Hildebrandt. Yes. Councillor Kaur. Yes. Councillor Olson. Yes. Councillor Stewart. Yes. Mayor Junkin. Yes. And that motion passes. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I have a motion put forth by Councillor Kaur, seconded by Councillor Hahn. Be it resolved that this regular meeting of council be adjourned until the next regular meeting scheduled for April 6th, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. And Mr. Mayor, right now we have 7.37 p.m. Unless there's any discussion, I would start the vote with Councillor Hahn. Yes. Councillor Hildebrandt. Yes. Councillor Kaur. Yes. Councillor Olson. Yes. Councillor Stewart. Yes. Councillor Wink. Yes. Mayor Junkin. Yes. Mr. Mayor, that motion passes and you may gavel out your meeting. This meeting is over and good night, everyone. Thanks, Holly, and congrats. Good night, all. Thank Thanks, you very Holly. much, everyone. Have a good night. Good night.